Today we have Jeff and Dan from Zao. Uh, I'll just be honest right right up front uh, with you guys. Last time we interviewed you both, it became probably one of our most downloaded episodes. You guys have a dedicated fan base. People Very. give a shit about Zao. And yeah, last time we, we interviewed you guys, you guys po- reposted us, and it quickly became one of our most listened to episodes ever. So uh, we feel very, nice. very obligated to chat <laughs> with you guys again. So we're really grateful that uh, you're willing to to hang out with us for a little bit longer again. Yeah, more than happy. I believe, too, the last episode is where we talked about the web, and the lot right. came from that as well. That's, That's right. right. You know, that became like a uh, Facebook group uh, thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's official oh, yeah. now. Yeah, that's official, I guess. That's awesome. But uh, that's what I always think about. I'm like, oh, that was from when we talked about that on that podcast. And yeah, the the, pe- the people enjoyed it, so they adopted it. You know what I mean? So it was a very uh, <laughs> it's, it's fruitful episode. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> We're shakers and movers over here at the Black Show. Yeah, you know that's right. Goes. Yeah. Last time we yeah. talked to you guys, though, uh, Jeff looked like a, a, a middle-aged man. And now he looks like he's moving into retirement. What happened, Jeff? I, you know what? Like, I, I just like, honestly, like COVID kind of happened. Like <laughs> w- where it started was like, I, my hair is all over the place. Like my hair is like, it's uncontrollable. Like when it grows out long, it it's just a beautiful goes, mane like, though, man. Yeah. But you know what? Like, it got to the point where I was getting tired of it. My kids were getting tired of it. My wife was getting tired of it. <laughs> and when COVID happened, I'm like, I can't get a haircut. And you can't like home cut this hair. So what would start happening was I just bought clips <laughs> and I would just like buzz it. And I didn't <laughs> like it. But so I was just like, oh, I'll just put a hat on. And then it got to the point where like, I was just like, I kind of got into the fact that I wasn't getting haircuts anymore. I wasn't paying for haircuts. Right. And I'm just like, and I kind of like buzzing it, but I felt like that was like sort of not being totally committed. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm just going to go full, full on Anton LaVey. And <laughs> just, Anton LaVey. Just, just go like. Are you like sta- Walter- Are you starting your own Satanist cult too? Well, well, I'll, <laughs> well, I will, I'll use the Anton well, I'll use the Anton LaVey analogy, but also like the Walter White, just like yes. breaking yeah, down. Yeah, Heisenberg. Like, I'm like, there I'm just going to go. And if I completely shave it off, then I can say I'm going for like the Jean-Luc Picard. Yeah, uh, or, or Lex yeah. Luthor. And yeah, and I'm I'm yeah. kind of digging it. Like, Dude, I, it looks badass. I'm you just, look like a more, uh, a more uh, esteemed and privileged Moby. Yeah. <laughs> you know you look like all you look like all those like actors and, and stars but you also could look like you know the facilities manager of a mega church too so there's that <laughs> <laughs> well the problem with the moby thing is like moby like I, I found that like and i was always afraid if i didn't have the right shaped head like if your head's the wrong shape and you like shave it completely bald you just it looks look goofy really yeah. weird yeah. yeah, and like the Moby thing, like his he's got like a round enough face that he looks like a cabbage patch kid. And like <laughs> so that's like kind of where I'm like, like sometimes I'm like I'll like leave the little thing going on where I'm like, yeah. all right, so you, you get away from that cabbage patch kid thing. It it elongates uh, the face a little more. That's why I said you look more esteemed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been it's inching just, it's a towards thing I'm it. trying out. Oh, sure. look at you. Yeah. Damn. No, oh, damn. Damn. No, it's actually long. I'll be there sooner or later. I also, <laughs> I'll, I give it like a year or two, and I'll probably just actually I've wanted to get my head tattooed for a while, so I kept it short. Oh dang! And, uh, and then I was just like, well, I'll just wait. It's like a long, not story, but, but anyway, it's the idea of just having nothing to deal with gets more and more kind yeah. of, uh, you know, it's a business decision. Yep. Yeah. All or nothing. Although you do, all or although nothing. you do have to you do have to stay on top of it though. Yes. Like, but do they have all those devices I see though? You know what I mean? There's all kinds of like oh you like you know what I mean? Like to shave your head at home and make like, you know, oh, like yeah, yeah. curved uh like handheld head shaving devices, you know, Ooh, keep that the, stuff the, under the, the biggest the biggest tip I got from somebody was if you're gonna shave your head completely bald, uh if you're gonna use a straight like a razor. Uh, is to not use shaving cream. Oh, but really? to use hair conditioner. Oh, there you go. Use hair sense. conditioner instead of shaving cream because hair conditioner moisturizes it, 
but shaving cream a lot of times is what gives you like the ingrown hairs and, it out. Yeah. yeah and i've actually started shaving my face with conditioner too i'm gonna do that so uh, beauty t- beauty tips from zaya the other question too is where is the line where you start to shine it that's you know what, what I was I mean? going to ask. When do you wax it? Like, <laughs> that's like they sell they sell products. I mean, it's a fit. I feel like you get there eventually. I feel like yeah. at this point you might say like that's ridiculous, but that's <laughs> like where you end up at some point. You know what I mean? Like I don't you'll think be it's... In, you'll be in the bathroom like Mr. Miyagi. Wax yeah. off. Wax off. I mean, if I start <laughs> if I start if I start uh, shining it like the right way, like it can be part of our light show when we play. Yeah, Dude, there you go. I wonder if you bounce the go. light off of it the right way. All right, so I wonder... here's a... oh, go, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead so. I was just gonna say, I wonder if you start shining your head if you would look back and say like, look how dull my head looked. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like the idea of not being not being shiny would be, be like, I'm just like, what was I thinking? You know what I mean? My dull. My, uh, uh, was it Matt? It Matt, you know, uh, yeah, <laughs> non shined shave head. Sorry, here's a, here's a question. <laughs> All right. All right, Dan, you get to tattoo whatever you want on Jeff's head. <laughs> what do you tattoo on his head? I would have to think about it. I mean, I, I see him all the time, so I give him something nice. You know what I mean? But, Aww, you're too kind. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've see. I'm really. Uh, this will go off topic, but I don't handle like when I was growing up and stuff. I was. Uh, I don't handle hijinks well. I just get like really mad. So I've always followed the like, if you know, uh, karma. Well, well the uh, like, uh, don't dish it out if you can't take it type thing. You sure. know what I mean? So I've never been a much of a uh, prankster, you know, because I <laughs> never responded well to such things. What was it on Jackass? Was it, uh, it wasn't, was it, wasn't Rick Yon, but he hated mustard. And there was that one skit where they like sprayed mustard on him. And he just yeah. like lost his mind and he like kicked the one dude's car door in. That was like <laughs> how I would react to things. And so <laughs> there's also that prank where they did where they were on a dune buggy and Steve O got tattooed while they're like yes. going over all these yeah. dune buggy bumps. Yeah. There was a Hummer. Wasn't it a Hummer too? Like, and it was like someone was like, hen- it was like someone weird doing it. Like, yeah. Uh, it was someone who my, wasn't a tattoo artist. I just went through a bunch of them because my son is like obsessed with the idea. He's only seven though. So I'll sometimes <laughs> watch and be like, is there like little clips that like maybe, and then it's like, no, but there's really, you know there's I mean? really uh, nothing that's seven year old appropriate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't, know. But every once we, in a while uh, though, I'll be like, you know what? I'll try. I'll look through. But like I'll do like a you know, I'll scan it for content and it's usually like bad, but like, uh, <laughs> But I was just recently doing it, so I was saw some of these, just watched it, kind of. Go ahead, sorry. Were we involved? With, did we do it, or did somebody we were on tour with pull a hijink on somebody that like backfired? Well, we, there we, was. We, we told somebody that somebody got arrested. Oh uh, no, they. You told. I was with <laughs> Evergreen Terrace, and we were running late, and you asked what happened, and Josh, I think told you guys that i was trying to steal a 40 and beef jerky yes and that they tried to stop me and i like pushed the counter guy or something and ran out they called the police and then i got arrested (laughs) and and someone called there's like i think downey got a lawyer and stuff and it was like (laughs) it had never actually happened that was those guys those were that was interesting, but now yeah. they're like, Dan was still trying to steal 40 and they tried, they like tackled him and he's like going to go to jail and he like assaulted somebody and it, none of it happened, but then our, we were just our like, manager, we thought it happened for a minute and then our manager was getting a lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my it God. Was he, like, he was on the ball. Oh yeah. That's, that's, that's a good like, manager. It yeah. was like, we'll call him back in five minutes and tell him that we're joking type of thing. And then it was just like, they call me back like three minutes later. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Dan, I, I got to imagine that like on the road and stuff with a bunch of bands that you had to have had a lot of pranks played on you, though. Yeah, we were. I think we always, you know, I feel like you had to play the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, if, if you don't play the game, you don't get involved. There was some slight stuff where it was like started with us. There was we got police escorted, remember, out of Disney in Florida. They like took oh, us all out one by that. Uh, I wasn't there for that. Was what? that with Dillinger? No, that had to be with you. 
That had to be. I feel like that'd be something he would remember. Yeah. I thought that's when you guys were with Dillinger and every time I die and you got kicked out of Disney. It might have been. That was right before it then. It had to have been. I thought you were with us. Well, now we got to know the story. I don't really remember. <laughs> I mean, that's it was a good night. I don't. We were with every time I die in Dillinger, I think. And yeah, that, I, I just remember some, we like set up a big outdoor hangout in the parking lot and there was someone filled someone's van up with, con- I don't really remember, but <laughs> they made us like dump everything out and one by one, the police escorted us out. Oh my and, gosh. Uh, it wasn't like nothing too crazy, but. That must have been when you guys got taken down from Jesus Free Kite Out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it was. <sighs> Yeah, <laughs> I really have to recall some of these, and I can we can double back and do like a quick, you know, be like Dan gathered his notes and we'll know, <laughs> you know. I'm not gonna like. I can honestly say that nothing like crazy happened in the sense of like overall, but just it got it was it just escalated to interesting, you know. Sounds uh, okay, so Colin and I again, we grew up in that Christian music scene. I will say for my for my experience. Zayo was the first band where I was like, oh, if you don't fall in line theologically with everything that for whatever reason they like that Christian music scene believes you're out of this. Zayo was the first band I ever found (laughs) to be like one of those bands that like kind of got kicked out of that whole world. Now, by that by that point where you guys sort of like officially were like, I guess you're not really a part of that anymore. You probably were already like way beyond that. But I just still remember being like 11 or 12 years old being like, oh shit, they like this music scene really means business about this because yeah. even Zaya was getting kicked out of this. I feel like there's like the two separate things where it's almost that like kind of like calling almost like a, you almost do certain things just to call people's bluff. You know what I mean? Kind of mm-hmm. like, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, I feel if I could look back and say one thing that I was always happy about is we always like, at least up to where we could be, we're always like honest about who we were. Do you know what I mean? I feel like, uh, and that was like part of all that. So it wasn't necessarily like a rebellious push, you know, in an attempt to whatever, but just kind of, I remember we just kind of got it in our heads. Like uh, at one point, especially like it's just, I guess, you know, just being open and honest about what we were doing and how we felt and where we were at, you know what I mean? And it definitely caused trouble, but at the same time, we were able to, I don't know, keep some sort of integrity. You know what I mean? At least it's like, hey, I never, I mean, looking back through all the things and all the changes, I mean, looking back is like at those points, like I don't feel like anybody was ever doing anything to like pretend to be something, you know what I mean? Like it was totally. always like genuine and it was, you know what I mean? Throughout the, what have you. So I remember hearing stories when you guys, even before I was in the band, I remember hearing stories like, where people were like, oh, my God, the singer from Zayo is tattooing people in the hotel room at Cornerstone. <laughs> I, I got in a lot of trouble for that, actually. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what did getting in trouble for that look like? I didn't get directly whatever because I was hanging out at the hotel room most of the time. But it was just uh, I think we had flyers at the merch table. <laughs> and that's what it was just like, call this call this hotel number. <laughs> you know? And uh my friend, uh, I had a roommate with me that tattooed as well. It was an interesting time. Uh, uh, here, here's but... here's a here's something I'm very interested in. Mason and I, if we come see you play a show, could we get tattooed from Dan? A small sure. one. That's all I do, really. I mean, not all I do, but that's my. Main I was thing. even saying, like, Colin, let's let's just go to Pennsylvania and get yeah. tattooed by Dan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just I work right uh, down the street from where I live, so. Dude, you know? brilliant. We yeah, should do that. No. It's a nice, you know, more than happy. More than happy. That'd you be know? amazing. But, uh, yeah, no, it honored. was, yeah, I mean, Russ is around, Scott's around, you know? Hell yeah, uh, dude. Jeff's have a Zayo kind of far away. Yeah, Mar- I, Marty I, I, actually I, lives the closest to me. I drive into Pittsburgh a lot now because I I'm a partial Steelers season ticket holder, so I drive. Oh, really? Ooh, what a what a bad what a bad year! Holy cow! <laughs> well, my family has had them for a long time, okay. and my my parents were gonna ditch the tickets, and I'm like, do not get rid of the tickets. I'll, I'll buy. So I'm splitting them with my brother, so I have half the games. 
Oh, and I've, killer, I've been man. taking I've been taking my uh, I've been taking my nine year old son. Awesome. Uh, we've been we've literally been driving from Brooklyn to Pittsburgh, seeing the game, and then driving back after the game. Wow, <laughs> which is like a, it's like a set, it's like a six and a half hour drive. It's like oh, a regular yeah. touring schedule. That's and right. He loves it. He loves it. Yeah, he's road dog. I saw nice. a stat today that said the Pittsburgh Steelers, the longest touchdown they've gotten this year is eight yards. <laughs> 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 I'll tell you what though. I'll tell you what though. Laugh all you want, but my nine year old son and myself <laughs> got to go and see Tom Brady lose to the Steelers. Oh, nothing better than that. Nothing my dad than that. My dad was in town because my stepmom always wanted to see Tom Brady play a lot. And I felt bad. I was like, you know, I was like, wait, well, yeah, it's gonna be a good game for you to just see him like, whatever, you know. I was just like, didn't expect that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the vinyl. All right. You guys, yeah. uh, th- this is super ex- exciting. Um, I'm just curious, like, how did this whole process happen to get this vinyl out? Uh, what's this whole process been like for you guys? I mean, it's we've been working with uh, Unoriginal Vinyl, uh, who has been basically uh, spearheading some a lot of these solid state reissues for a few yep. years now. Uh, and it was kind of accidental that we even got as involved as we did. Uh, when Unoriginal Vinyl first was like brought on board by Solid State, saying like, hey, we want to reissue this old stuff. I don't remember exactly why, but somebody, uh, Jason from Unoriginal Vinyl, reached out to Roy Gowdy and showed him that they were going to do the Splinter Shards reissue. And Roy reached out to me and said, do you know anything about this? And I'm like, no, we don't. What's happening? So I, I reached out to Jason and I'm like, okay, like, yeah, this is cool. Like, uh, but what's going on? And he, it, he's explained, he's like, yeah, Solid State's doing these reissues. And I'm like, we, I told him, I said, we want to be involved. I said, the band wants to be involved. I'm in touch with everybody from every era of the lineup. Uh, I found out about this through Roy. Like, we talked to Jesse now. Like, let's do this right. If we're going to do it, let's do it right. So we've been partnering up with Solid State and Unoriginal Vinyl to do all these back catalog Zaya reissues, basically up to our specs. Every time we do them, we, we do everything we can do from what we know personally to reach out to find original artwork. And Jason on Original Vinyl was, has been really good with that, too. He's like really to, big into that. Yeah. Yeah. Reaching out to Dave Rankin and getting him to Dave Rankin literally repainted the front cover of blood oh, and fire. That's cool. The yeah. original, the original painting yeah. was gone. He said, I'll just paint it again. Again. And then like when we got to, we got to Liberate, all those original art files are gone. Like, absolutely vanished gone disappeared there's nothing you can do right and so jason's like all right they reach out and we and me and dan and scott sat with dave dave rankin on a zoom chat like this and discussed the concept for the new liberate art we did that we got all new masters for the vinyl dan would go through and recorrect the lyrics that was the part i was happy about it was like <laughs> yeah you, there's a lot there was a lot of mistakes. It was like a lot. Yeah. <laughs> they're just like, and like, it was funny because I was never picky on records. Even now, and they're like, like, what do you want? And I'd always be like, please just make the lyrics like legible. <laughs> and it was like, <laughs> they're just like, there's all these just like, what can't read it and stuff's wrong. And I was just like, it's, it's very cathartic to go back and be like, yeah. it's so nice to fix then, these things and then when we, we came to parade of chaos it was the same thing it was like well what do you want to do and we're like we want a die cut hole in the middle like the cd had we yeah we want to dan always always bothered that you couldn't read the lyrics so we fixed that and and then dan went through and actually fixed lines that were missing or lines that were wrong yeah. like on all of these records they're literally lines that are printed in the lyrics that people have up on lyrics sites that aren't even right. remotely close to what he was saying. <laughs> I know. And like they would go through and so we're fixing all that stuff. Honestly, the misheard in. lyric uh videos on YouTube are some of my favorites though. Yeah. I don't know if you've watched any of those. Those are so great. Colin oh, yeah, and I bonded over those growing up. I, I 
I've actually, there are songs that when I found out the real lyrics, I was like crushed. Like there was like songs where I was like, that's the coolest line I ever heard. And then I would read the lyric and I would be, it would be, I would be completely off. Yeah. And I'd be like, ah, it's pretty weak. You know, I'm just yeah, kidding. Like, you know what I mean? Just be like, I don't know. For you, I bet it was, hold me closer, Tony mm-hmm. Danza. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's this song, it starts, and I uh, the first couple times I heard it, I thought they said 32 teeth in a dog bowl, which, oh. like, it was like this thing where you, like, walk in someone's house, and there's, like, a dog bowl full of teeth. Dude, but it's that's just 30, so badass. But it's just 32 teeth in a jawbone. That's just the line, which is, that's, that's okay. It's just, like, a speck of, like, like, hey, here's a speck of the lower jaw. But uh, I was, like, always, like, man, that's the coolest line. And then I found what? out that's not the line. My favorite one that that's I just from, heard. That's from Alabama Getaway. <laughs> Is it really? The, oh, yeah, opening, yeah, yeah. That's the opening line of Alabama Getaway. Oh, I was my gosh. Like, uh, sorry. It's like, if you know, we can get it, get into some uh, whatever early. No, I'm just kidding. That's amazing. But, uh, my favorite uh, one of those that I totally misheard for the longest time. Do you remember that song called Cheerleader by OMI that was like big on the radio for a long time? Yeah. I thought he was saying, I think I found myself a jelly bear <laughs> and I just, that was the only thing I could think of, but I was like, this is just a cool beat. And I think he's saying jelly bear. And I'm like thinking like a, you know, like a, uh, like a gummy bear. That's, that's, that's literally all I thought. And then I heard that the song name was actually called cheerleader. I was like, oh, I feel like <laughs> the biggest idiot. <laughs> I don't know how I, mean, I heard jelly bear. <laughs> I mean, there's, I don't know that there's any, really zayo lyrics that i there's one zayo lyric that i always misheard that when dan wrote out the actual words that i and it's on parade of chaos that we just did yeah <laughs> i always thought in pirate's prayer you kept oh saying gosh. hello hello uh, i always heard it as hello hello and i didn't realize till you wrote it out that you're right that you're saying alone alone how long how long it's el- alone, alone. Oh, it's alone, alone. I heard hello, yeah. hello. Yeah. No, it's alone, alone. Wow. I always thought Sorry. it was hello, hello. And I'm like, what does that have to do with a pirate? Pirates that really say hello. Like, <laughs> or maybe they say oh, like. How would they but, say? I mean, but, but he says like the word alone cannon. earlier and then it like repeats. I, and I never knew that. I always heard it a different way. <laughs> but now yeah. it's in the lyric sheet. It's official. Dan, did you have the... Uh, uh, the feeling like you wanted to go back and like rewrite some lyrics. Oh yeah. Like, I just would. pretend like that. That's what they were forever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. There's well, been just stuff that recently. has been written. Yeah. There is stuff you that is rewritten. Written. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, like, like ones that you were just like super embarrassed about or like, that makes no sense. Like, why did I write? Yeah. That? Uh, I think, yeah, no, pretty much. I would say, mm, I'm trying to think because I started writing differently probably around like probably it was like funeral god it took me to like funeral god to figure out like how I wanted to write you know what I mean that was like the first it's like drawing I don't know some people can like look at something and draw it exactly and it looks like exactly the same or sometimes people look at something and it's like they draw it and it like you can tell what it is but it doesn't look exactly same. it's like I used to try to write a certain way and it like came out but it wasn't exactly you know what i mean totally whatever and then around then i started figuring out i don't know like a a method or or, i don't know how to explain it but so everything i look back on all that stuff i wish you know what i mean totally everything was very short and just repeated a lot like you know (laughs) what i mean i look back and there'll be like songs i'm like it's like four sentences long like you know what i mean (laughs) just like i was like why i didn't what have I done to myself? You wrote a pop you know song. What I mean, I used to make you it can, so easy. You can fit myself. all the li- you can fit all the Liberate lyrics on like a, like a four by four. <laughs> yeah, <index card>. I know, <laughs> I know. But uh, it was uh, partially it was because the music too it was much more like uh, straightforward, a little bit more repetitive in the sense of like the ver. You know what I mean? Sure. So it was easier to like repeat uh, parts, fill up a song. So I understand why, I guess. But that makes sense. But yeah. I don't know. I, uh, but at the same time, I appreciate it for what it was, I guess. You know what I mean? So I would like to rewrite it, but I don't, 
I don't know. Is what it is, I guess. You know, it makes, it makes sense. I I gotta imagine it's very difficult to to always be happy with the art that you've made, especially when you were younger. You you change, you change so much as a person. Looking back, I'm sure it's just like ooh, cringe at times, right? Even though for most of of the listeners, it's definitely not cringe. But like to oneself, you're like, mm, that, that's not how I would have liked to have phrased that or like to have said that. It's crazy too. I think part of it is like at that age, you're just so like, it's weird to like look back. You're so like extremely sure of everything like that yeah. you feel, you feel, you know what I mean? You're like, this is 100%. Now I'm just, I feel like I'm just like, ah, who knows? Like about everything, you know what I mean? <laughs> like you know, anything throughout the day. It's like, oh, we'll see. I'm not quite sure. It sounds but exactly like, like my uh, students that I teach. Yeah. But I feel <laughs> well, like it's like when you're young, it's just like, you're like, I know it's like, I'm right. And like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I don't know. You feel so uh, sure of yourself that you like want to like talk about it. You know what I mean? I guess. I don't know. So, yeah. And I, and I feel it's, it's almost kind of sucks because it's like, you're at a point in life where you still have a lot to learn, but that's also when you're the most like sure of yourself, mm-hmm. you know, totally. and then you get older and actually like figure things out, but then you don't really like have much to say. Uh, you know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> and it's, it's and it's. I also think too, it's really hard. And I've always tried to push. I've always tried to push. And I, I think like Scott's one of those people that he he gets he gets upset about stuff and he like won't let it go. Like I I wish I could have done that different. I wish I could have done. And mm-hmm. I've been in this parade of chaos reissue is a good example of that because for years he talked about how much he hated this record. And and <laughs> as we were as we were going through this, he's like, "Well, this record isn't so bad." And like, and I was even saying to him recently. Now I, I was actually talking to our old manager Ryan Downey because he, he I was texting back and forth with him because he's just, you know I was just letting him know that we did it, and he's like, "Oh, that's always my favorite record." And I'm like, "Scott hates it," and <laughs> and he's like, and I'm like, but at the same time. It's one of the few records that very rarely do we suggest a song to play off of it. The Scott vetoes it. Yeah. And it's almost like over time we've caught him. Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't really hate this record. Because every time we suggest something, I'm like, I'll play that. Yeah, I'll play that. I'm like, no, you don't like, you don't dislike this record. You've made him a believer. <laughs> right. Well, I think you just, maybe a lot of times, like when you're the creator of it, you get tied up in maybe the experience of when you were making it. Mm. so you're like i don't like that record because you didn't like maybe you didn't like the as an aspect of recording it or you were in a bad state of mind at the time that you did it or you know so it's like yeah it's it's really weird because it, sometimes you have to step away from it and i keep saying that like scott and even like russ gets down on stuff i'm like just let it go like yeah. let it go you made this record it's what it is and you move on and you can go back to it and revisit the aspects you like. You learn from it. There's stuff that every record I've been on with Zayo, there's stuff on almost every record that I would change. Mm. But I, I'm not going to keep myself up all night about it, you know? Right. It's like, it's like oh, I didn't like that thing that we did. All right, we're not going to make that mistake again. We're going to learn from it and make the next one not have that mistake. Totally. And then you realize you just made a different mistake. And now you have to make up that. You have to make up for that one. I'm curious with like parades, uh, you know, parades of chaos, right? With the new, the, with the new vinyl and everything, like, what would you do, Jeff? Because you weren't a part of that album. What would you do that's differently uh, with that album? If you could record album, nothing. I love that record. It's my favorite. It does. Record. Okay. It is this my is favorite. A, uh... <laughs> it's my favorite Zaya record of the Solid State era, hands down, <laughs> top to bottom. You know, this has it, been this has been known for a long time. This is like it and very open. I, Russ Russ backs me up on this, and so does Marty. Me, Russ, and Marty, and Ryan Downey, our old manager. When I told him that me, Russ, and Marty said that, he said, "Tell Scott I said the same thing." <laughs> and I told Jesse that today <laughs> when I talked to him, I said, "Jesse, it's my favorite record of the Solid State era. I would change nothing about that record." No. I would have to say it's also my favorite uh, record of the Solid State era. In fact, so much so, this is an honor, I think, to you guys. You know, when 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 Parade of Chaos came out, it was not exactly a time, at least where I live, where I can just go out and find this record, right? I would have had to travel, like, major distances. Parade of Chaos, along with the first uh, Norma Jean album, Bless the Martyr, 
was the first two albums I illegally downloaded. <laughs> <laughs> and I listened hey. to them so much, man. Yeah, no, hey, I don't, uh, that's a whole thing, but I, uh, I'm okay with it. You know I mean, I bought I mean? the records later when I actually finally had yeah, the chance no, that's, and, that's what and, I mean. the, and the funds, but yeah. I mean, in fact, I think I've bought, I think I bought Parade of Chaos three times. You would have been like, what, eight, like eight or nine when that, when those albums came out, you would have been really young. Um, I would have been 10, 11. Yeah. You'd there. been really when young. I, when I got it. Yeah. Yeah. That was, it was like my first foray into like heavy music, really. No, it's funny you say that too, because like even then, like, like we're talking about like, because it was everyone was caught off guard because we did Parade of Chaos before self titled. Right. And which was all, with us and unoriginal vinyl was part of the joke. Like, what's the ultimate chaos? Go out of order. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, 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 I'm always down for high concept shenanigans like that. But even then, like you know, like now that we're talking and we're like, okay, now we're gonna rewind and do self titled. Everyone's like, are you guys gonna fix the drums? And I'm like, no, no, that's part of what makes that record what it is. Like, and, that, and that's what I was saying before. It's like, just that's what it is. Live with it. Move on. The, the the weird drums on self-titled is what makes it as weird as it is that's totally. part of the character of that record yeah and it like and again like like the i felt like the you know like don clark and all that like doing the artwork like the artwork it's like it's like it looks like a weird like avant-garde corporate brochure like everything about it is like this like cold sterile kind of it just it's like perfect like just let it be this weird psychedelic broken techno record <laughs> that's what makes it what it is like, i dig that <laughs> you know we were kind of talking not... about the like the whole process of uh of you know revisiting that stuff i'm curious like when you guys like make a demo or something like that do you kind of have like the original ears for that demo when you go in to record like we're like we're like you fall in love with like how you pronounce this line or like how you made this drum fill and then like when you get into studio you want to try to replicate that but you know it's not going to quite sound like it does in that demo what's interesting about how zeo works is the demos are actually literally the skeleton of the final record right now oh. like that wasn't how zeo operated before sure. but like from the time of say awake onwards the way we do songs is the demos are fully formed usually with program drums and all of the guitars bass we know what the songs are i go into the studio we mute the program drums i play along to the demo guitars and bass that's my guy like not necessarily like a click track metronome. I'm sure. when I'm playing the drums in the studio, I'm playing to the bass and guitar parts. The song is already finished. And then and I make changes. And then we go back and redo the bass and guitars that I track to the original demos. And then changes are made based off what I did off of that. Like cool. So I actually tracking to the demos like and then we just overlay the new stuff over the demo guitars and bass sure. like and, and it's something i never did before you know like scott introduced this concept of how we would track Th that, you got uh, a lot of power then like how you then end up recording those drums shapes then obviously guitars and bass so that yeah has, and that's a like, huge the, influence the, on how the album's going to sound so you have a lot of power in that then i I do to an extent, but I always, and there's, and I've learned it. We, I made a couple mistakes. There was a couple things I did on awake. And there was a couple things in the early stages of well-intentioned virus where I sort of started button heads with Scott a little bit about, I was making some drastic changes while I was playing along to the demo stuff that he was like, no, like I have a vision for this thing on this part don't change that and 
we opened up that communication now. And basically when, when I, when we're working on the demo stuff before I go to track, I'll say to Scott, I'm like, okay, I really want to make some drastic changes to these parts. And I send it to him and he hears it. He's like, do it, love it. And there's certain ones he's like, nope, don't like it. Changes the mood of the song, don't do it. So we, we developed that language where I kind of know now certain parts not to change or at least check it. But he'll like, we'll go back then if I have a really good idea that they think on the drums, we'll go back and we'll change all the guitars around that drum part. So there, there is some, there's com some communication. It sounds me. just like a good marriage, right? It's a good marriage. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But it's, it, but it's like, it's like anything. It's like a relationship. You learn, like, I know there's certain things that like, I better ask about this. And there's certain <laughs> things now that I know, like, if I do this, scott like if it's scott's song that he started he's really gonna like this thing i did and he might change the guitar part to match it like nice we have less head like, over yeah there. scott scott i think uh when he i think when he writes and gets songs in his head he gets whole songs in his head you mm -hmm. know what i mean not riffs like it's like multiple guitar tracks bass drums you know what i mean uh I feel like that's vocal, very uncommon for most people, isn't it? Uh, vo vocal parts. I mean, there's a lot of stuff where there's like, wow, it's kind of odd how it works. It's like uh, sometimes it's just kind of like Jeff was saying, there's times when we get rid of things, times when we like, they'll have, we'll change, like keep melodies and change lyrics and things like that, you know? And it's, I guess, organic. It goes back and forth. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, it's Scott's. Yeah. He's uh the best way to say it i feel like uh because i played in another band with him too and it was very similar where he would just have these like whole song like some you know what i mean it's like everything and uh well, it, and it, like it would be song. real fast too it'd be like hey uh, i wrote three songs this week and they'd be like full <laughs> songs <laughs> and i'm like what are you doing there's times where i'm like i don't i can't i can't learn or like <laughs> like process music at this pace let alone like whatever and then what's funny now is in the studio, I'm not like in the loop and all the music, but I primarily, uh, I demo all my vocals and I actually pretty much work with the, the engineer. It's mm -hmm. like, I go in and I, you know what I mean? I go in and play him stuff and it's, we, it's um, proven to be, it's proven to work. You know what I mean? It's proven to like, and I appreciate it because he's, one of those things it's like writing with your other hand he's kind of like shown me some things and we've worked on some things that i normally wouldn't wouldn't have when i say i wouldn't have done it's not because it's not something i didn't think was a good idea or didn't want to do it's because it was something that wasn't in my wheelhouse or maybe like a reference i hadn't been exposed to you know what i mean more so than whatever and then uh i mean there's times where we'll go back and change things but it's it started with like little or things and it just proved to work where I would demo stuff. And then, uh, cause I, I do the same thing. I eventually hear complete whatever. And, you know, usually like do it out as a demo and uh, put out extra material and then like chop it back, I guess, you know what I mean? Type of, uh, for sure. For yeah. the most part, but it's yeah, proven it's like to be a, a weird way that everything works and we can produce content and it's like, everybody's happy and, you know what I mean? Feels like, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's a lot and, of, we uh, have a, we have a lot of trust at this point. Like, yeah. it's like, you know, we, we, we've developed that language where, mm. you know, like we said, Scott is a complete song guy. Russ is a riff guy. Mm. Russ will yeah. just throw out countless riffs and they're not <laughs> connected into anything. And like, they'll be like, oh, I'm going to throw the, all, I'm going to throw it all away. And <laughs> in the meantime, in the meantime, Scott, Scott has been grabbing those riffs. And then like, yeah. oh, here, this is in this song now. Like we just like steal Russ's riffs that he was gonna throw yeah. away. And like Marty will write a song, and like it's almost a complete song, but the vibe is totally different than what would sound like Zayo. And then Scott shapes it into a Zayo song. Oh, uh, that's cool. And like it's there, there's a couple of those on the fears what keeps us here that were Marty songs full mm -hmm. and. Like I, uh, the song on the fear, uh, I always bring it up as an example, uh, Kingdom of Thieves. Mm. The first time when Marty 
Marty had Kingdom of Thieves written out almost in its entirety, and it sounded like the police. <laughs> <laughs> like it sounded like the band the police. And we actually kept part of that in one of the breakdowns of that vibe. But I have a yeah. demo of it. The whole thing sounds like a police song. And then Scott's <laughs> like, oh, I'm just going to ugly this up. And we made it a Zao song. And, and uh, Last Time for Everything the on Fear is what keeps us here. It's pretty much a Marty song, top to bottom. Wow. And that, that song came out like a folk song when he <laughs> composed it. So we just like totally like uglied it up. And then Dan and I came up with that ending concept. <laughs> Marty Marty became Marty Robbins and he had to turn it into Zayo somehow. That's what you're saying. That's what we did. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So speaking uh, of writing music, yeah. a year and a half ago, Crimson Crimson Corridor came out. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're a year and a half ago from that now. Is there any new Ooh. music we could maybe expect? <laughs> well, that that that's that's a problem right now uh no it's not really i mean we have there's about like four or five songs that are in very embryonic stages and i think that there's an aspect i think that scott is playing bad cop right now where he's like i have more stuff but i'm not giving it up mm. <laughs> i think he wants he he wants he, he i think he, he's He's almost kind of playing tough guy right now. Like, no, I think we should maybe write some stuff together again. I want to just sort of like sort of jam that out a little bit. Interesting. Which is something. Well, I mean, well, I've been coming back a lot more and we, we actually have like a full on rehearsal space at Marty's house now, which we didn't have for a long time. Mm. Nice. This is relatively new that like we have like, Zayo headquarters at Marty's. Nice. Like nice. I have drums set up there. I can walk in and we can play. All our gear is there. Uh, it's where we've been rehearsing, working stuff out. Um, and I think the vibe is like, let's get in the room and try stuff. Like almost like jamming. <laughs> See what happens. Yeah, yeah. it's been a, it's Which been is, a while. You know, I mean, so. I when's the last time that's happened with the Zayo record? Mm -hmm. Like. Blood and Fire? Liberate? Liberate was like, yeah, it was like, I remember that's the last, I'm not saying it didn't happen after that, that's the only one I can like, I really But not to that memories. level. Because we were practicing in like behind Scott's house, I remember I feel like that was the last practice space because we didn't, it's just funny like the people out there that like Zaya, it's like I wish they could have been to some of the practices we've had to have, like where it's like <laughs> we don't even have amps and like Jeff's playing on like the floor, and, like everyone's <laughs> playing guitars, but they're not plugged in. And I just kind of like go along with stuff and we would go over like entire sets like that. And then there was just like when, some, when you would you know do that, I mean? would you would you still scream or would you just sing it out or talk it out? Uh, go, like, talk or whisper. Talk it out. Yeah. It's yeah. too weird to like scream, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's and uh what if yeah. what if we had a, a, a an acoustic Zayo album? Still scream. <laughs> it's like weird. It's like that'd be yeah, that'd, that'd be odd. I don't know. That'd be uh, wild. It'd be man. like, uh, yeah. I guess maybe depends on how it'd be mixed and stuff. Can maybe yeah. make it work. Well, you yeah. think about I guess, I guess like the Chariot did it with Speak, right? Yeah, yeah, it could happen. <laughs> I th I think if you did it, it would have to be super weird. Yeah, right. like like Marty Robbins and the Police. <laughs> like, <laughs> Like I would always, I would almost like if we did something like that, it would almost have to be like a field recording. We're like kind yeah. of like what you're just describing, like like maybe there's like a campfire mm. going, and you actually hear the fire in the background. Oh, yeah. And like, yeah, I mean, like, you guys what, basically what like, already like made like a black metal album with the la you know, with if, the last album. I still remember the way you described it, Jeff. Was you know there there are notes that you can take a smoke break in between, and I still remember that to this day. <laughs> And I oh, think yeah. that's an amazing description because it's super it accurate. Is. I mean, it's so slow at times, at and times. I think yeah. it's great. And uh, if you if you guys are able to master that, which I think you guys totally did, I think you guys could do pretty much anything at this point. Totally. What if we did it where, what if we could get a special guest and we could do like, it's like recorded live by a campfire and we could get Neil Hamburger just to like talk the entire time <laughs> while like play, play acoustic guitar and scream. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm down. I'm, I'm into it. 
I love it. That would be great. Guys, it is time for your top five biggest guilty pleasures. All right. So we'll go back and forth. Mm. Unless unless like one of you guys thinks you have a, a bigger list. Sounds like Dan has a pretty big list of guilty pleasures. <laughs> no, I mean I don't know where to start. You know, Jeff, do you want to start? I feel nervous. <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of can't. I mean, and these are these are bands that I'm... I say that I like that people would make fun of me for. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Like they're, they're not guilty of the fact that I'm ashamed of it. Yeah. I, I'm saying I like this and screw you. Like exactly. 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 Deal with it. All right. Bingo. One of my big ones. I'm a big defender. I get in arguments with people about this all the time. Pearl Jam. Yeah. Pearl Jam has some definitely guilty pleasure attitude to it at, at I, times. I, I and and this this plays into one of my other guilty pleasures that <laughs> but but I'm gonna defend it. I'm gonna say Pearl Jam. Now here's the thing. When people yell at me about Pearl Jam, they always bring up Eddie Vedder and like yeah, bleh, bleh, and like yeah, and then, <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, like I don't like that stuff either. Yeah, I like later period Pearl Jam. Mm. Like I started getting into Pearl, I started getting into Pearl Jam at the point where most of the people dropped off of Pearl Jam. Sure, like no code and onwards. <laughs> like I, 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 when they started ripping off Neil Young and the Who, <laughs> like that was the point where I'm like, I'm into this. Like that, yeah, those that's are thinking. what I want. I remember, like uh, my roommate at the time was like. They started being, he was like, yeah, they put out like all these like live records, you know what I mean? Kind of like, uh, like, like dead style, you know what I mean? He's like, yeah, yeah there's like, like tons and tons of like bootlegged whatever. And I'm like, Pearl Jam, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I had just lost. And I, I don't say that in, I have any like this, whatever for Pearl Jam. It's more of just like, I didn't realize it's like I had not stayed in the loop and hadn't realized it had become like a like a, a new and, thing and, and i and i also like kind of like i think eddie better has a lot of bad rock and roll karma based mm. on like when they first yeah. came out where ever, he became a caricature and like he hadn't figured out how to be eddie better yet and like yeah he was real easy to clown early on and like as time has gone on i'm like you know what? I kind of want to fucking hang out with Eddie Vedder. <laughs> <laughs> like Eddie Vedder seems kind of cool. He like he likes baseball, the Who, and drinking <laughs> wine. And I'm like, I, I, I could back this. Those are all the requirements yeah. for life, honestly. <laughs> One of my other things that I, I I make no apologies for Neil Diamond. I'm a oh, massive Neil Diamond fan. Sweet. Yeah, that's a guilty pleasure for sure. I I Ooh. own bah, almost bah, bah. almost every Neil Diamond album up to a certain point, like like mid '60s up to like 1983. I own on vinyl, <laughs> and I have since <laughs> I was Holy little. <laughs> I, I, he was one of my he was one of my first concerts. Uh, yeah. Does Neil this Diamond. come down to like your your love of baseball? No, it's like Neil, Neil Diamond and baseball, they just go together, you know? Oh, the, the Sweet Caroline shit? Yeah, nah. yeah. Nah. Not a Sweet Caroline No, fan. it's just like... I mean, it's one of my least favorite Neil Diamond songs. I would uh, agree. I always like Neil Diamond because I'm, I'm a real fan of that. I'm a fan of that, like, mid-60s, like, Brill Buildings songwriter stuff, like Carol King, Burt Bacharach, all that kind of stuff. Great and songwriters. If you like Burt Bacharach or like Carol King, that's cool. Neil Diamond's not cool, but he was from that same school. He was he he was yeah. from that same. But why isn't he cool? Like I, I mean, I agree he isn't but, cool. But the, why the isn't he is, cool? He never tried to be cool. That's the thing. Doesn't like, that doesn't that moved... make him cool though? <laughs> right. Like, he moved. Like in a weird way. That's gonna lead into one of my other ones. <laughs> like Neil Diamond <laughs> got to the point where he's like, I'm not even going to try to be cool. I'm just going to be Neil Diamond. Like he got, he went into the Vegas mode even totally. before Elvis got into Vegas mode. He yeah. just got like, I'm going to do it. Like, but I like some of his Vegas mode stuff. And I think he's a great songwriter. I love it. The, uh, I can't, the, I can't argue with that. I think you need to start a Neil Diamond podcast. 
<laughs> I mean, his, his 19, uh, 1976 record, one of my favorites, Beautiful Noise, produced by Robbie Robertson of the band. That's why Neil Diamond is in the last waltz. I'm telling you, man. I don't know if I've known anybody t- to know anything about one particular subject more than you know about Neil Diamond. I'm telling you. Uh, but that leads into my one of my other that I'm not going to say is guilty pleasure. And I know Scott's backed it up. ABBA. Oh, yes. Colin loves ABBA. Great guilty pleasure. I'm also a massive ABBA fan. Love it. ABBA. Again, ABBA is so weird. Weirdest band. Dude, they are musically, <laughs> like, actually very intricate. Like, very, they're not like your typical pop band. I'm going to go no. on your, I'm going to go on like a Neil Diamond spree, but with ABBA for you. Like, they honestly are like insane musicians. Like, yeah. They're not your typical pop band. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I don't no. want to talk about. I, I remember. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with the writer uh, Chuck Klosterman. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, he wrote a big thing about ABBA, and he summed it up perfectly about how weird ABBA is. He's like, it's like a bunch of Swedish people singing in a secondary language, but they have an inordinate amount of songs in Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it's kind of weird. Everything you need to know uh... about ABBA. There's Swedish people singing in English, but then they have a bunch of songs in Spanish. What's your go-to ABBA song? Uh, Voulez-vous. Ooh, which is in French. You know, or French <laughs> well, I don't know if you know this. Here's some ABBA deep info for you. You know, <laughs> ABBA, has, ABBA puts out records in different languages. Yeah. So there's like entirely Spanish versions of ABBA records. Like the Pretty whole record is in Spanish. But did you know this? It's not just that the lyrics are different, the mixes are different. Really? Yeah. So are and some of are like, some of those other language mixes better? There are ABBA fanatics that will argue about which language mix is the better mix. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole <laughs> subculture of ABBA nerds are you are you at that level this. cullen i don't think you're at that level i'm, I'm nowhere near that level no <laughs> <laughs> i i will say you guys need to come out to an abba song sometime like like <sighs> right before be, right before you guys play your chance, first song chance, have an like just like the the most like unknown abba song just like come out to that oh my god that would bring down gotta the come house. out to fernando Oh my God! Can you hear the drums, Fernando? Oh, see. Great. <laughs> see now, I feel like I'm eating up a lot of time because we've only got. That's okay. Time. That's okay. All right. What's your next uh, 1970s guilty artist? <laughs> uh, it wouldn't be 70s. That's I'd all moving, right. I was just joking. I'd be moving into the 90s. Uh, Spice Girls. Oh yeah. Sure. You like the Spice Girls, huh? <laughs> This, I own, this might I own. be the best guilty pleasure <laughs> list ever. This, this is, is by so far good. the best guilty pleasure this list we've so had. Good. I, I own the first, well, the, the only ones that I recognize as legit. I own the first two Spice Girls albums. Wow. Uh, and I, I did see Spice World on opening night in the theater. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> which Spice Girl did so, you identify with? Uh, which one did I identify with or which yeah. one did I think was the hottest? <laughs> <laughs> which is which is which one? I don't know that I identified with any of them. You though. had to have. They all had their different personalities. You know, scary spice, sporty spice, ginger spice. I, I was always into ginger. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Favorite. All right. Ginger was my favorite. Uh, one out. of my one of my favorite fun <laughs> facts ever is if you go to KFC's <laughs> Twitter page. If you go to KFC's Twitter page, if you click on who they follow, they only follow like 13 <laughs> people and all like all of the Spice Girls are one are some of the spices that the they follow. The five spices or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> whatever the that's one of amazing. my favorite fun facts ever. They're part of the secret recipe. What if, yeah, right. what if each Spice Girl has a part of the recipe? I and it's like a real thing it. that they're just flaunting in our face. I would not. <laughs> you know be what I mean? You would have to defeat all of them to get the uh, <laughs> whole sheet. You know I would mean? be willing to bet <laughs> that the Spice Girls are actually Colonel Sanders's daughters, illegi- multiple yes. illegitimate children. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. he's Colonel known to have like many, many, many of those. It's like the Nick Cannon of and, like the 1950s. 
<laughs> and I'll, I'll still back the Spice World movie as oh, geez. a good. <laughs> hey, hey it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good comedic, musical I comedic can't. romp. <laughs> Speaking okay. of that, this is off topic, but I was always bummed out. It kind of ties in when Britney Spears made that movie Crossroads, because oh. I always liked the Crossroads movie with uh, Ralph Macchio in it where he was like the uh, Robert Johnson, you know what I'm yeah. talking about? Yeah. Uh, where at the end, Steve I was the devil. Yeah. I was always like, how can you come out with a movie with the same title, Brittany? It's not cool, man. It's like, it's, cu- it's cultural appropriation yeah. is what that yeah. is. I was just not happy about that. You know, I, I totally Sorry. agree, man. That's great. All right. So my number five, and I, w- we will use this to pivot over to Dan. Uh, yes. Grateful Dead. Oh yeah, that's a big guilty pleasure. It's the, but yeah. it's not. I mean, it's it really isn't. I I fully been back. <laughs> Since you shaved your head, you have many more uh, deadhead vibes for some reason. Really, yeah. uh, Dan, you've been to more dead shows than me. Do are are bald heads big at deadhead? I dead guess shows? maybe I don't know. they are now. I mean, because none of them can like most of them can't grow their hair anymore. But yeah, uh, I'm. And I'm going to use this example to say how deep this goes. And I don't know if Dan realizes that I know this. We're talking about some shows next summer. And Dan gave me a date that he absolutely cannot start until after this date. (laughs) And I'm not stupid. And I realized that Dan's company is going to be in Pittsburgh on the date before he said he could do it. (laughs) And we're going to stuff. We're going to stuff before, too. This is, yeah, you know what I mean? It's well, up well, you to said, there. You're like, I can't start until <laughs> June 6th. <laughs> and I'm, I'm well, like, actually, wait. if you want, I will <laughs> twist it back and even make it worse because initially, I don't know if you remember, I said I wanted to, remember, I was like, this year I want to do stuff. And, you know, well, that was, an, and then they went and did it then. So, yeah, man, it was just like, yeah, whatever. Well, once the Dead and Company like, announced their, once Dead and Company announced their failure, yeah, they were going yeah. to Pittsburgh. That <laughs> the tour gets pushed back, man. Yeah. That's, that's what it is. In, yeah. in, well, it in, actually got pushed forward. And, and well, I'm it got mad. pushed back a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> I understood. I knew. I knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> it's okay. in, in Dan's defense, as a tattoo artist, it is a requirement that you listen to the Dead and yeah. Motorhead. Well, no, so. and well, I think if that Misfits is like the uh, oh, Misfits the as well, totally, one, totally, you know, yeah. That's back back to the lyric right. thing, I wanted to say something funny. That was like uh, when I remember when I was a kid and all the Misfits okay. stuff. Like when I was getting like the it was pretty much tapes at the time, but they never printed lyrics. And it was like me and my friend. He had a thing he could like slow stuff down, and we we could not figure out like <laughs> probably like forty percent of the lyrics. And we like kept these like little journals of what we thought they were. And this is a weird whatever, but when the Misfits, the coffin box set came out, it was the first time they ever released the lyrics. And it was like, if you want to talk about years of misheard stuff, I mean, it's not even like funny. It's just like, there's stuff where I was like, that's not whatever. But that had to have hurt your head. What's the song where he talks about how clean his bathroom is? Uh, <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Yeah, mm. it's There's not. A uh, yeah, yeah, yeah no, it's like it's about uh, what's it called. You don't want to come in the bathroom with me. With me, yeah. <laughs> and how clean his bathroom is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of other guilty pleasures, but yeah, no, that's that's one of them. I mean, I don't feel like it's a guilt. I'm very open about it. I guess it's not really a secret. I mean, we made a T-shirt <laughs> and everything, like pretty Heck much. Yeah. A, whatever and we play a a weird version of a song pretty much almost at every show and we say what it is i guess it's so oh whatever. yeah yeah when we play the ghost psalm now we call it the dark star version because yeah. we, we have a jam section in it now yeah the end is always <laughs> different every time we've been doing it for years now no you know what i mean it's that's been awesome. uh whatever uh but yeah, no just... that's so i have to almost just start to acknowledge that and begin to skip things or I'll get completely pulled <laughs> deeply. <laughs> this is like, like a six part series of like my thoughts on these things. So like, but um, I'm, I'm trying to think of some more, I will say a quick uh, number two, and it's not a band. It's a current song. 
Okay. That I was like, my kids were listening to it. Have you, have you heard the corn song? Yes. It's come. Man. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, my kids were listening to it. And like one day I was like, this is all right, man. Like, I don't know. For some reason I was like, it was just some dumb. I was like, if you just want to break it down to like purely like an elemental pop song, you know what I mean? Like there's even a video that dude just shows like, he just has like a keyboard and a microphone. And I'm like, just buy the book, man. This is like a hell of a pop song, man. Like, do you know what I mean? And it's just like cut samples to evoke, you know, or uh, whatever, not a tune or type of and he sings like some backups, but like, I don't know. Dude, that's a perfect pick. I like that. He's he's the amba- that kid is the ambassador of the Corn Palace now in South Dakota where near that's where right. Colin yes. lives. That's right. Yeah, no, but it so uh, but no, but I was just like I think I like got to the point where I like listened to it, like you know what I mean? Like well within my free will. Like I'd be like, I'm gonna be like yeah, listening to like whatever weird stuff and I'd be like, I'll give that a listen. Yeah, it's all right, you know what I mean? A good pop song, <laughs> whatever, you know. Have you ever played it while you're tattooing someone? No, no. I uh, I'm pretty Ooh, nice to wh- people. I don't whatever. Ah, uh, okay, all right. <laughs> you know, I got you. I usually ask people what they like. I like enough stuff where you know what I mean. What if one day you're tattooing somebody and you're like, "Hey, w- what music should I put on?" And they're like, "Oh, there's this band called Zayow." <laughs> what would you do? And they just didn't know it was you. That'd be <laughs> I hilarious. Know. I'd probably mess with them. Like <clears throat> there was a. I don't know if I told this something's telling me I told this story last time, but whatever. I was walking out of, I think it was Walmart in Greensburg. And uh, this was a couple of years ago. And there was like a guy walking towards me in a Zayo shirt. And I just, I looked at him and I was like, you actually like that band? And uh, <laughs> he was like, I don't, I don't know if you have to censor stuff, but he was like, F you, man. And I was, it was like, he like, for real. And I was like, I didn't say anything. Like, okay, <laughs> He's probably listening right now. And, yeah, and I like, was like, wait, that was I, Dan that just told me to fuck <laughs> off. Yeah. I was like, you passed, man. You passed. <laughs> just, you know what I mean? If you're listening out there, you passed, you know, so <laughs> passed cool. the test. You know what I mean? <laughs> That'd be like my dream as an artist. I think that's that's two. What's your, uh, what's your I third guilty think. pleasure artist? Well, yeah, Dan, don't uh. think of it as don't think of it as guilty pleasures. Think of it as what would somebody make fun of you for liking? Mm. Like, because what I know, I know we own up to all the stuff. Like, we own it all. It's just like I feel right. like you get made fun of for a lot of it. It's like just to what like, level? What's the things where you tell people you're like, I like this, and like really. Like you like that? I'm trying to think of stuff that we listen to in the band that we're all like. Dan, yeah, what's your like Neil that. Diamond? What's your Neil Diamond? Mm. <laughs> I mean, Ella. I mean, I like all that. Not to be whatever. I like all that old folk stuff. So you could any of the like anywhere from like I don't know, like Gordon Lightfoot. Oh, and Gordon Canadian Lightfoot's one Treasure. of my favorite. One of my you favorites. You know what I mean? Dude, uh, Sundown is like that song is like. I mean, that's yeah. not even good. That doesn't that's, everybody. That's not guilty because I feel like everybody. Song. Just knows that. Carefree Highway, great song. I like that song. Uh, <clears throat> I, I don't know. I like it's any all of that. Relative too, man. I just went. Like and saw, I just went and saw Billy Strings on Saturday, and that dude can rip, man. I don't know if you're familiar with that guy, but totally. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's not really someone would make fun of you for listening to that, but probably um, not popular enough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my see what's weird is I'm exposed for the first time in a long time to like my kids like to listen to the radio. And what it is now is it's like Fortnite. Like they hear songs and oh, like yeah. whatever. So now it's like they want they have like specific requests in the car. So for the first time and like I don't even know how long I'm like listening to is like current me you know what I mean? Yeah. And and most of it, I don't know. I don't want to say I dislike it. I wouldn't listen to it, but I'm trying to think of uh, get made fun of for what would you listen to on your own that like you know if, if you were by yourself nobody knows that you're listening to it you're going to turn it on just because you enjoy it but mm. you know everybody else is going to make fun of you for it or all the people that you respect are going to make fun of for you uh, what is her name <laughs> uh, Enya <laughs> you're trying to say Enya uh, I okay uh, I believe uh, Juice Newton Juice oh, Newton's there you go. Uh, yes. Angel, Juice Newton's Great. Angel of the Morning. Oh, is like, Angel seriously, of the Morning. 
that song. I'm sorry. See, I have I have to wade through a lot of it. Like I'm that looking for it's like one. uh that song, oh. like I will listen to uh over and like there's just I get sometimes it's just like you get I'm like I gotta listen to it. It's just how like about, it's great. How about Queen of Hearts? Yeah, I like that. Right and then I'm um, trying to think actually I, I went down like a rabbit hole and then I'm trying to think I bought the 45. It was like the original singer of angel of the morning. It was what? like, uh, oh, I'm trying to think I can probably look for it real quick. Sometimes when I'm trying to, I can't believe I can't uh, recall this information right now. What was her name? Oh. But I believe she was on like a smaller label type deal. Merrily Rush? It. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I got the, that's like the weird stuff I'll buy late at night. I like went down a wormhole <laughs> and then was like, found out that was like the original, original. And then I was like, oh, I got to buy a weird 45 of it before I go to sleep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, funny uh, thing about Juice Newton, that was actually the very first record I ever owned. It was a yeah, Juice Newton it's record. like, it's like one of the greatest names. It's like, it really is. It's it? just like, it's like, uh, I wish she would have. Like, would, what kind of porn does he do? I, I wish <laughs> Dan, Dan, I thought, I thought, I thought of a song for you. Yeah. The, you've mentioned to me that we were like, Oh my God. One of my favorite songs of all time. Yeah. It would blow people's minds. Eyes without a face. Oh Billy Idol. yeah. Billy, oh I, that, God. that song is fan. It's so it's, there's that <laughs> weird little rap part in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Outside of that, that song is like haunting. It's like it's terrible. It's like it's pure like eighties. I don't know. I love it. I have so many. I could. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to get to like the top of the mountain. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> there's stuff that's just weird. You're like, oh, that's weird. And I'm trying to think because I know we're gonna like get off this. And I'm try- actually trying to look at records and be like, what do I have? It was on a big Dire Straits kick. I mean, that's not that embarrassing, but like that's, into it's dad it, rock. That's total dad it's rock. Just yeah, like, that, 100% that, that qualifies. qualifies. It's like I love too. Dire Straits as well, but they qualify. Yeah, we listen, uh, we we listened yeah, to Dire Straits on, on the, the last tour. Yeah. yeah, you know what? This is uh that Russ played us that I listen to a lot is uh like on a regular basis is that Hentai Boys. Remember that? It's like just oh, that yeah, yeah, weird. Yeah. It's like trappy, like uh, electronic. I don't know. I don't know the proper genres of that music, so I don't want to describe it to you know what I mean. Some kind of way. It's some kind of way. Some old guy doesn't know what he's talking about. (laughs) Trying to describe our music, you know what I mean? But um, Mason, Mason, who is the who is the guy that we just had on? I can't think of who it is that was like a big K-pop fan all of a sudden. It was Dallas Taylor. Dallas Taylor loves Dallas Taylor. Oh, okay. Dallas Taylor loves K-pop. Yeah, yeah. I, I can totally see that. You could see that. I can't see I can't, that at all. No, no, no. I, I, can, I can see Dallas being into that kind of stuff because uh, just from from knowing him and like just like <laughs> talking to him about like no, I totally see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ru- like it's funny you bring up the hentai boy thing with Russ. Like, yeah, Russ is real into all the wave music. Yeah, like yeah. For most of most of this, <laughs> Russ listens to like obscure sixties <laughs> like folk like, singers and. Then like electronic <laughs> music and nothing yeah. in between. It's a very yeah, it's strange awesome. combo. I love. We it. need to get Russ on the I'm podcast. Really... He seems like the goofiest, weirdest dude ever, and we totally <laughs> need to get him on at some point. He well, would be. He amazing. was into like he was into like the chill wave stuff, yeah. and then he was trying to explain all, all the different waves. He's like it was like chill wave and, and synth wave, like, synth wave, vapor wave, vapor, vapor wave. wave, and then it, at one point there's he explained something to me. There was Simpsons wave, what? Yes. And, and what was... Seinfeld wave? Oh my god! Seinfeld Jeff. wave was the one that blew my mind. I was just <laughs> thinking of this. Which? What was the which one called? Was it like? Remember, he was telling. It was like the same night. Witch house. Yes, that's it. That's yeah, it. it was like witch house. Like now we've gotten out of wave, so we've gotten into house. We're, it was so like witch. If the viewers can imagine it, we're all like sitting in a dark van, and for some reason it's me, Russ, and Jeff, and he's like playing us. It's like uh, just weird electronic music, like very sincerely. Like, what does Witch House sound like? I'm very curious. Uh, it's it's like kind of haunting like house music, but like yeah, like but like creepy and spooky. Is there like a is there like a lady in the background going? <laughs> no, no. Okay. 
So it's it not like, like Banjo Kazooie Witch. It's like <laughs> it sounds like stuff that witches might listen to if okay. they were listening to Chill Wave. So it should be yeah. like the Hocus Pocus soundtrack, is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But Dan, like, is that I'm five? Home. I don't. I have no I, idea. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm looking. I'm trying to think. Oh boy, I was at. Uh, I, I mean, if you go back, I was. One of the iconic old shows I was at the uh, when Bon Jovi was on tour for a slippery one wet with Cinderella. <laughs> I was there. That was like the hits record too, man. Oh dang, yeah. man! That was my first concert. That's Mom very, took me. That, that is very, very, very guilty pleasure. Yeah. yeah, Bon Jovi. Oh yeah, Dan. You and my dad would get along, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The van, the van rides are good. <laughs> we ween ween's a good band too Ween. we can talk i mean it's not a totally. it shouldn't be a guilty pleasure either but especially their country record of all the ween records oh, the i ween feel country like country record yeah it's fantastic it's it is fantastic. uh uh trying to think <laughs> keep going but <laughs> I think pretty much anything we listen uh, I, to. I was gonna, I'm just like I was trying gonna to be say, like, oh, man, I was going to say something that might be a goldie pleasure, but I mean, it, it, this is a good time to get it out. I mean, the Yellow River Boys. Is yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you, I yeah. don't know if you guys are familiar with the Yellow River Boys. No idea, but I love the name of it. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Tim Heidecker's band. Okay. It's all it's uh, straight up country band. Like, like oh, legit, it's like... Like old country. school country, like oh, okay. slide guitars. It's like, right. so, and they get into pop country too a little bit. Yeah, interesting. That's but a it's weird high combo. Conce- it's high concept. All, yes. all the lyrics, all the lyrics. <laughs> is it as, is it as high concept as Neil Diamond? <laughs> no, but <laughs> all, all the all the lyrics are about drinking urine, <laughs> <laughs> except for one song. Except for one song. And it's about eating crap. <laughs> so. But it's extremely well produced. Yeah, it's like actually, happy. It's not like dark. It's like very like happy. It's uh, it, it's it's the most. It's one of the most stomach turning things yeah. I've ever heard. But it's completely fascinating. <laughs> yes, I stumbled across. Yeah, the commitment to the idea is intense, yeah. and it's yeah, the Yellow River Boys, it, it it's 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 more disgusting than Judy Allen. Yeah, no but way, it, it, no way. It, it oh yes, might it's be. Bad. It no, might be. It, I just came a, I came a, I think I came across it just uh, listening to his. <laughs> he was on tour, and I went down a wormhole, and then we were just driving, and it was. You know what it was? I think, uh, speaking of, it couldn't even get worse than this, but around the time, that was the same day as Blowfly, I believe. Yeah, Blowfly? It was, involved, Blowfly, <laughs> it was uh, which is equally, it's just pure. It's like, pure I don't know, Jeff, Jeff can describe it. But I feel like it was just like, we were listening to this ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> stuff. It's, I guess they're guilty play. They're, I guess, the type of music where people... Uh, that would that would be fully on guilty pleasure. It, there should be some sort of warning. It's they're both pretty. Well, uh, I mean, like the thing about the Yellow River Boys, and like, like if you know Tim Heidecker, like you know, he Tim Heidecker is a high concept comedian, and he like sticks with a shtick, yeah. and like the Yellow River Boys would have been good. As, <laughs> like it would have been funny as like a five minute skit on Tim and Eric, <laughs> but, but like, it's a whole they, album. It's an entire <laughs> album that's extremely well produced. Like it sounds it like it could literally be like a pop country record that came out. There's right like, now. I mean, there's backup singing. Like it's but like yeah, the like, way you're, like, the way you guys are describing it. It almost kind of sounds like a like a Bloodhound Gang kind of thing. Maybe, like, but like, like where like too... everything's just like ridiculous, but it's still like pretty good music. Still, yeah, it's it's just completely over the top, and everything about it. Like, well, these could be like hit songs on a country station, except they're talking about drinking piss. 
<laughs> and, it, it, and it just it goes it goes for like forty five minutes and yeah. never breaks the face. <laughs> and, it, and and everyone involved sounds so sincere and serious. It's like there's like you know there's like really good like female backup singers and like <laughs> it's like real grand you know what i mean and it's uh <laughs> and then every once in a while someone in the back of the van will be like man that like lap steel player is like totally tearing up that solo like, oh, that's incredible musicianship and then like meanwhile somebody else is like this is making me nauseous can we turn it off <laughs> But that's, I can't yeah. believe I've never heard of this. This sounds amazing. Same. Yellow River Boys, I'm telling you. Yeah. Well, the endorsement comes very, very strong from you two. So I think, <laughs> we're, uh, we're, I think... We're, we're huge Tim Heidecker fans. Like, all right, it sounds yeah. good. We'll be yeah. on it. We're going we're gonna to be listening to that all night, I'm sure of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, we'll see if we're back on again. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. What do you guys want to? What do you guys want to plug? Uh, obviously, uh, Braids of Chaos totally sold out. But uh, yeah, I mean, like at this point, what does Zaya want to plug? We're, I mean, we're still, we're still plugging Crimson Corridor. I mean, it's still out there. It's not that old. Uh, <laughs> great, great. It, it <laughs> still would be, in my opinion, the best record of the last five years in terms of heavy metal. We are. Heavy metal. Yeah, we are currently working on really boring back end logistic stuff from the uh, live from the church stream that we did. Like we did like the live stream concert. Yep. We are putting it out as a physical thing that people can buy. Awesome. Like a, we're doing a DVD, Blu ray. Uh, there'll be a vinyl version of the audio. We're doing a VHS. A VHS, really? Yeah, we're in a limited edition VHS. What? No one. way. Yeah. <laughs> How do you go about the? You said boring logistics. I can't even imagine what it would be like trying to find a Honestly, VHS manufacturer. I, these the days. VHS thing, the VHS aspect is the least complicated thing of anything I have to align right now. That's because they're like. Someone wants a VHS? The DVD and Blu-ray. <laughs> They've been stuff, waiting like, for years. No, 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 like Cody like, authoring yeah. authoring DVDs and Blu-rays and working out the menus and all that stuff is so much more complex than what I have to go through to get a VHS made. Wow. VHS is like, here's the video file, and they like literally copy it onto a VHS tape. Like when you work with DVD and Blu-ray, there's like different specs and right. like the menus <laughs> and all that shit like no the vhs thing was like easy if i could really get weird if i could find someone that would make laser discs i would make that'd be the best laser. man let's make one you know or like two <laughs> that'd be incredible no but we are, we are put at the live of the church is that there'll be a dvd cd set a blu-ray cd set and then vinyl a vhs and yeah so that's that's in process now that's been wow. around well that's gonna be exciting you guys actually have a fan base that still probably owns a vhs too that's the thing <laughs> i still well, have one i know some i know some people that have put out limited edition vhs's recently and really? they're like yeah there's people that buy them like, that's wild we sold 125 nintendo cartridges i think that makes sense sell- though I think we can sell 150 VHS tape. I've got my I've got my Nintendo literally right next to me over yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, the the Nintendo cartridge thing made me think like, okay, we could we could put out a hundred of anything on a stupid format and someone will buy it. Yeah, what's the stupidest format you would put something out on? I mean, a Nintendo cartridge was the stupidest format we could. Have I think that's the most on. brilliant one, honestly. I think that's brilliant. Hmm. But that was that was that was high risk. That was that was one of the highest risk things we've ever done. <laughs> like when you like uh, just from the cost basis. Yeah. Like we made we made a hundred and I think a hundred and fifty of them. Yeah. Like the cost of the cartridge was almost fifty dollars a cartridge for us to make. Holy buckets! <laughs> like that that was that that what we had to invest to make them, and right. we didn't know if anyone would buy them. Like fifty dollars a copy to make something like that was over five grand. We had to just hand away, 
and be like, is anyone going to buy this? That's that's a lot of money mm-hmm. to just hand away if you don't know if anyone's going to buy it. I know what you should do next. You should do an Edison wax cylinder. Oh, I would love to. That would be I great. would love to. That would be the greatest format ever. And I the, most, do, the most hipster format possible. I want to do an 8-track. 8-track would be yeah, really cool. That, That'd be really cool. That's the... Uh, yeah, that... And you could really, like re- that's... you could like redesign like the 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 album art to look like super eighties. Well, the problem is no <laughs> one makes a tracks anymore. Like you can't get an a track made. So if right. you were going to make an a track, you would have to repurpose old a tracks. But right. the problem is old a tracks. The length of the album determined how much tape is in the a track. So you would have to have like a maximum amount of music. And then every A track would have a different amount of music on it. Right. So even within the A tracks, you wouldn't know what you were getting. Or you'd have to find like it, you'd have to find like the one album that comes close to like the length of the album that you're doing, and then um, and then maybe, find the A tracks of that album of and that album. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or you could have like a sweet like secret song at the end or something. We'll f- we'll always find something stupid to do. That's fun. Be- you can beta. You could go. Uh, to Ooh, the beta, dead, max. Dead beta max. Yeah. yeah. Dead format. Beta max is the better format, honestly. Or yeah. you could, following the Nintendo cartridge, you could put something out on like Turbo Graphics or something. You know, like some <laughs> weird old Neo Geo. Or, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, or with the way Netflix <clears throat> is going recently, you could just put something out on Netflix. And, uh, <laughs> that's harder than you think it is. Yeah. That's harder okay. than you think it is. Well, there was actually, a, I mean, there was somebody that was talking about like uh, about how vinyl, like the limited edition vinyl is getting really ridiculous. We almost did it, it this getting... year. We almost did it this year. There was a concept we had. We played a show earlier this year. It was a reunion show uh, for <coughs> Abnegation. When we did the Abnegation reunion show early on, there was a talk of doing a, an EP, which we still might do. We were going to do a cover song EP. Ooh, and the cool. initial plan when we did the, this reunion show, I was going to do a limited edition CD that was only available at that show that we played. Mm. We weren't going to announce it ahead of time. If you came to the show, the CD was available at that show. If you bought it, you walked away with it. Any copies left of the CD after the show was done, we were going to destroy. <laughs> and then the music was never going to be put up digitally. That so is the awesome. concept was if you only got the CD if you happened to be at the show, happened to look at the merch table and buy that CD. And if you didn't get it, those songs, you'd never hear them unless you owned that CD that you bought at that show. That's how you make to notice it. That's how you make a CD worth 300 plus dollars. Well, we almost did it. Uh, I mean, we just didn't record the songs, but and then we, we kind of <laughs> dropped that concept, and we we might just record them legit and do. Well, it. when you guys do your but, campfire album, that's the perfect time to do it, then, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, it'd be nice if someone's like, yeah, could do yeah Neil Hamburger and Tin Heidecker, you know? Yeah. I mean, uh, Jeff Dan. We are just so stoked with what's coming out with with Zao. We're really excited about the new the new vinyl. We're super stoked for you guys that it got sold out basically immediately. Uh, we're really excited for the new stuff coming out soon. And uh, yeah, we're just super grateful to to chat with you guys again. Again, this is one of one of our biggest episodes we've ever done. I think people really, really care about this band. And uh, that's certainly uh, highlighted in the fact that this is one of our most downloaded episodes. And so, uh, yeah, thanks again for for chatting with us and just hanging out with us for a little bit longer. And uh, yeah, we just hope for the best for, for the future of Zayo. Thank you. Thank you. It's appreciated. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, we'd, ha- we'd, have, we'd have you guys <laughs> back a hundred times over if we could. 